Many SRD systems make effective use of FPGA for data acquisition and heavy lifting DSP processing. FPGAs are by nature reconfigurable, but SDR systems often fail in exploiting this interesting opportunity at runtime. Some attempts to overcome this limitation do exist, and the best known is clearly the RFNOC framework. In this presentation, we show how it is possible to make effective use of partial reconfiguration capabilities of modern FPGA devices. Extending the range of applications RFNOC can be applied to. Unfortunately, support for PR is not yet available in the software stack of commercially available SDR devices. The objective of this work is encouraging its integration. Please welcome Anthony Converse. Hello, everyone. I will present you FPGA parcel reconfiguration in software defined radio devices. Oh, I am Anthony Cormer. I have 10 years experience in hardware development. Oh, previously, I work in multimedia group at UPFM. And since six, six years, I was working at Reds Institute at HLGVD in Yverdon, Les Bains, in Switzerland. So our plan for the presentation is a brief introduction and an overview of RFNAC. I will explain you also partial reconfiguration and I will continue with partial reconfiguration on the SDR platform. I will describe uh, our modification on the design to apply the partial reconfiguration and I will show you our testing I will have a short demonstration and finally we can conclude with the conclusion on the future works. So uh, this work was partially funded uh, by the European Space Agency inside the SDR Makerspace initiative. So uh, the goal of SDR Makerspace uh, is to develop a variety of uh, activity around uh, communication and SDR. So if I give you an example, so we can write um, a service on a small satellite. So in this satellite, we can have many services running and we would like to reprogram one activity by our program. So we arrive to the activity uh, SDR FPGA with partial reconfiguration. So the objective was to develop a proof of concept of partial reconfiguration in SDR platform. So I will have a short introduction of uh, what is an FPGA. So it's a field programmable gate array. So it's an array of programmable logical block. So the, the user uh, can write a program in HDL languages to configure the FPGA. And the FPGA, uh, when you program it, it is fixed with the configuration you loaded. And the FPGA is high computational power. So uh, you can run in parallel many, many operations, but the development is difficult and time consuming, and it is better to be an expert in the domain to, to have a good result. And so we arrive to the SDR devices. So most of them have an FPGA. So uh, it is often uh, in between the RF module and the processor, and the FPGA can run some signal processing uh, operation. And the uh, new radio framework simplifies the development of the signal processing application. So with this framework, you can have uh, different uh, functionality, and uh, we can choose which operation could be run on the processor or run uh, uh, some part on FPGA or, or you can run uh, all the design in the processor 
it is what you want. You can decide if you want to accelerate one functionality to, uh, uh, to use this functionality on the FPGA. But to use, to have the functionality on the FPGA, you need to use an RFNOC block. So that's why uh, the open source framework uh, for FPGA of ETUS research in the SDR devices are created. And it's called RFNOC. So this simplifies the development of the signal processing algorithm in an FPGA. So uh, uh, RFNOC will give you a library of blocks uh, which many operations, so you can have FFT, FIR, GAIN, may, many blocks like this. And you can use it in the GLU radio flow graph. So you can take a block, an RFNOC block, add it in the GLU radio flow graph, and after you can run the, the graph, and uh, the graph will collect the data directly from the FPGA. So as you can see here, we can have some RF notebook like the radio and the FFT. And all are in the FPGA size and it is communicating with the host to um, uh, save the, to collect the data and after you can use it or display the data, whatever you want. So if you go in more detail in the internal structure of an RF NOC block, so it uses a NOC shell access stream interface. So, uh, and it expects to, to have a CHDR packet. And all of the RF NOC block uh, is connected via a crossbar, so we can see it here. So all the RF node blocks have the same command interface, and all the blocks have uh, an ID. So we can recognize the block with his ID. So when we want to construct a, a design, uh, we need to create a combination of uh, the different block we want to use and to implement this in the FPGA. That's why uh, for our test, we have used uh, the E310 platform from ETHUS Research. And we have put together some blocks. And quickly, we arrive at the limit and uh, the implementation fails because there is not enough available resources in the FPGA. So like we see here, if we put a DDC, an FFT, plus an FIR on a FFO, it is not possible in this platform. So we are strongly limited by the available resources. So some other limitation of the RFNOC usage is for each new design, you need to generate a new bitstream. And in this bit, the bitstream contain so all the blocks we have previously chose. So, so we need to uh, think before which block uh, we want to use. Because when we run the design, we cannot change block at one time. As we see before, we are limited by the uh, FPGA available resources. And when we need to change from one configuration to another, we need to stop the design. So we arrived at the main contribution of our work. It is, uh, the question was, Partial reconfiguration can be helpful to reduce or delay these shortcomings. So we will try to answer it. So what is partial reconfiguration? 
partial reconfiguration uh, is the modification of one or more portion of the FPGA logic uh, while keeping the, uh, the other portion of the FPGA in a running state. So uh, we can have, uh, we define a pair region and we can modify the, the operation inside this region and we keep all the other part of the FPGA in a running state. So we can have uh, an operation running in the static part and was not stopped. And we can program a new functionality uh, in the pair region and finally use it. So from a static design, we have no a dynamic design. So the advantage of the partial reconfiguration is to saving area on power on power by time multiplexing the hardware resources. So if one functionality is used only at one time and you want to replace it by another, this is possible. So also another advantage, it reduces the configuration time uh, with a partial bitstream compared to a full bitstream. But the partial reconfiguration comes with some limitation. So we cannot have in the pair region some uh, the external I.O., the transceiver, the clock component, or external memory. We can only have a programmable logic. Uh, uh, also, another limitation is the signal interface between the static part and the partial part cannot be changed at one time. So it is fixed before. And also the pair region, of course, it have a fixed size. So here in Xilinx, we call this a pair block. And of course, to apply uh, the PR, we need uh, it need extra step in the bitstream generation. So we have a partial reconfiguration on the SDR platform. So the partial reconfiguration could allow to swapping uh, a block at one time. So we can change uh, uh, block functionality. So we can have FFT and we can change it by FIA. We see that RF knock block have the same interfaces. So uh, it is good with partial reconfiguration. And uh, with the partial reconfiguration, we can have a full bit swing, one foot bit swing, you load one time. And after, you can reprogram only the pair region to change the functionality. And in the meaning time, the, all the static part uh, who is not affected by the pair uh, region will be kept in a running state. So you can have a critical operation uh, stay running during the partial uh, loading. In our case, uh, we, we have tested the pair region in with uh, E3 and 10 platform. So we can conclude that uh, partial reconfiguration is a good candidate with RFNOC block. Next step, so to have this partial reconfiguration on the SDF platform, we need to add a free signal because during the loading process of the pair region, we can have some glitch uh, on the interface between the static part and the pair part. So it will, it will send some wrong data and we want to avoid it. That's why we had a free signal and this free signal disable uh, all the output of the pair block. This free signal could be controlled by the ARM processor. 
So when we want to program one uh, one pair version, we enable the symbol while the pair bitstream, and after we can disable this signal and use a new functionality. So uh, uh, we have two methods to, to write the bitstream. Uh, we can use gtag or through the processor with FPGA manager. So, but with gtag, we need to open the SDR case, like you see in the picture, and we need to connect a, a cable. And the programmation time is slow. It's more around a second. But with the deuxième option, through the processor, we don't need to open the uh, SDR cases. We do not need to plug a cable. And the progression time is faster. It's faster. It's more in range of milliseconds. So it's, it's a good point. And the only thing you have to do is to enable the FPGA, uh, the partial bitstream option in the FPGA driver. And this functionality is supported in uh, UHD 3.14 uh, uh, and uh, Linux 3.14.2 uh, uh, Xilinx version. But uh, we, uh, with the newest version of UHD, it uses a new FPGA driver, a new version, and this functionality is not yet uh, supported, but it could arrive. Uh, we need to need to modify and uh, uh, modify the driver. So to create uh, a design, uh, we should we should choose what we want to have in the pair region. So in the pair region, we we put a RF node block, and the RF node could could be a custom block or uh, an RF block, not block from the UHD library. So we create the design with UHD image builder tools. Then we need to modify the design to apply uh, the pair functionality. So we open it with Vivado and we do all the steps we need. We define a region in the FPGA, like we see here. And finally, at the end, we can generate the static bitstream and also the partial bitstream. We arrive to the test. Uh, so we define, first test, we define a custom RF node block, which a gain block. And we define a second one with a gain of two. And we're testing it with a C++ program uh, using the UHD API. So this program loads a static bitstream. After it can load a partial bitstream during what time. It can string data to the RFNOC uh, block and collect the data and save it to a file. So uh, we can see here the result. So we have first uh, after the static uh, programmation, we collect the data with gain 1. And after uh, we load the partial bitstream with gain 2, we can see the result as double. And here we can back again with uh, static uh, with partial bitstream of gain 1. And we see we have the same sound at the beginning. So this validates the right functioning of the partial reconfiguration in a RF node block. Second, we can have a test uh, with RF node block from UHD library. So I can show you uh, to, with the demonstration. So here, uh, I am connected to the, to the board. Well, we see before. So here's the board connected with an Ethernet cable. And in the board, we can first list, uh, I have first programmed with a full bitstream. And we can list 
uh, which bug we have here. So here we can see we can have a radio, a DDC, FFT, and a FIFO. And we want to replace the FFT by the FIR block. So first we need to, uh, to enable uh, the option for partial bitstream. So it's there. And after we need to enable uh, the free signal. So it's done. And after we can, uh, we can load a, a partial bitstream with FIR functionality. So here it's done. And after we need to disable uh, the free signal. And we can list again uh, the available block. And here we can see we, can, we have no a radio, a DDC and an FIR and the FIFO. So uh, we can conclude it's working with the RF notebook from UHD library. And we can, yeah, on the next slide. And um, we can also use a GNU Radio flow graph. So here we can, uh, we have tested. So uh, um, after uh, configuring the design, and you can change the block uh, with partial bitstream. And after, yes, we want to use FFT. So here, we, as you can see, we can have a signal at the source. And we go to the RF knock block and we display it. And we can see you can uh, have the FFT of the signal. So this validates the use of uh, the GNU radio flow graph with a partial bit stream. The last test, we have uh, measured uh, also the time elapsed set to load the uh, link bit stream. So with the static bit stream, uh, um, we have uh, 143 milliseconds. And with the partial bit stream, we have uh, 33 milliseconds. So a partial bit stream is four times faster than a static one. So it's a good, a good step. So to conclude, uh, FPGA partial reconfiguration is feasible in SDR devices. We can have a better use of FPGA resources by uh, time sharing the hardware resources. So pair can be applied to a simple custom RF knock blocks, or it could be also applied to a more complex RF knock blocks coming from UHD library. And we have also test uh, the partial reconfiguration design with UHD utility with a C++ program using UHD API. We have also test with a new radio photograph and all are validated. The future work, so pair is not mainstream yet. You need to do some part manually and there is not available into the software of the currently available commercial SDR platform. So the objective of our work was to encourage the integration of partial reconfiguration support into the software of this platform. So if you want to, to have access to our work, you can look at, at our wiki or you can have some information into the SDR Makerspace website or you can contact us in, uh, from the Red Institute website. So thank you all and I cannot swear to your question. Thank you.